Hello, and welcome. We're going to talk about how to bake clothing items in this uh, in this video uh, in Blender, and we're going to do it using Cloth Sim so that it looks really good, and also so that you can uh, essentially convert the Cloth Sim into a mesh so that you can then take that clothing item and export it into, uh, you know, Character Creator or whatever whatever software you would potentially want to use it for. So if you don't want to hear me uh, ramble on for a minute, then uh, skip ahead to the part where I open up Blender. Um, but just quickly, uh, I have been building a game, and so this is going to be a series. There are going to be more videos than this, and I'm going to talk about some of the pipelines that I use and some of the sort of tips and tricks that I think can be really helpful for you with your 3 modeling, um, with building assets for Unreal Engine, and uh, steering clear of some of the pitfalls that are out there because there are a lot of them. So there are a lot of uh, tutorials and videos and stuff out there with uh, pretty bad information, and so we're gonna we're gonna dispel some some bad techniques hopefully in this and over the course of uh, this video series. So let's get started with uh, cloth sim, and I'll talk about some of the process that I use and how you can use this in in developing assets for for yourself. All right, so let's go ahead and open Blender. So open Blender up, and once this opens, go ahead and delete the default crab, and we're going to import a uh, image reference. So we'll need two things to get started here. The first is uh, a base mesh, which we're going to be adding collision to, and I'm going to be using this character creator base mesh here. But you can use you know whatever character base mesh that you have and if you don't have one then you can you know quickly sculpt you know maybe a cube with some with some arms and uh, that will that will work for the purposes of at least following along with this tutorial the next thing that you'll need is a reference image so i'm gonna add a reference image and i'm gonna do it using the images as planes add-on so to do that you just go shift a and as long as you have the add-on enabled it's image images as planes and then I'm just going to grab this, this reference image here. Now in order to make our, uh, essentially the base mesh that's going to become our, our cloth item, what we're going to do is first, if you look up here, there's this little filter icon. Just click on that and then enable this selectable. And what that's going to allow you to do is to click on our reference image and uncheck that. And now we can no longer select this. And that's going to be really useful because we're going to be working over top of it. And it's going to prevent you from accidentally selecting it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a plane. So go Shift A, Mesh Plane, RX90 to rotate it 90 degrees towards us. And then we're just going to scale it down and bring it here in front of our, in front of our image. Now we're also going to want to add a mirror modifier to this. And I'm going to grab the origin and just GX to drag it over in the X axis. And then I'm going to disable origin transform and I'm going to turn on clipping. So with clipping turned on, you can enter edit mode. And then when you drag these vertices on the right side here over into the center, uh, they will meet and clip together. And now this is making this into one mesh, one object that is joined together, which is what we want. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, just sort of drag this into roughly the correct position and start outlining this object here. And it doesn't really matter what your reference image is. Uh, you can get away even without a reference image for, for simple clothing items. But I'm just going to grab these two top vertices here and extrude and scale and extrude and extrude, making it a little bit larger than, than the reference, uh, but that's fine. And scale and extrude. And actually I'll bring this, oops, bring this up here like this. And I'll just make it a little bit wider than the reference image. And that's because we need a little bit of extra space because uh, we're gonna be sewing this around and so you're going to lose a little bit of the a little bit of the material at the edges here. 
So the next thing we're gonna do is bring this over here in front of our in front of our mesh, our collision mesh. Just drag it out here so that it's in front of the mesh. Uh, position it roughly where it should be and scale it up appropriately. And then I'm just going to enter edit mode. And actually, before I do that, I'm just going to apply the mirror modifier and extrude this back like this. And so with that extruded, uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and click on face mode here. And before we do that, actually, I'm just going to add a subsurf modifier and set it to simple rather than Camel Clark. And the reason I'm doing that is because you want a little bit more geometry in order to get good cloth simulation. So I'm going to apply that. You see we've got a little bit more uh, geometry to work with. Uh, the more geometry you add, the better your cloth sim will look. Uh, but of course, the slower your simulation will run. So I'm going to hit tab here and I'm going to go into edge select mode. And with this edge that it, this edge loop that it added here in the center of the object, I'm just going to hit X and hit dissolve edge to get rid of that. And then I'm going to go into face select mode and I'm going to alt click to select this face loop on the outside and hit X and delete only faces. And so now what we're left with is a plane on either side of the mesh, uh, which is connected by a bunch of these bunch of these edges. Now, one other thing that we want to make sure that we do is to go through here and go into edge select mode and delete any edges where we don't want our uh, where we don't want our object to be sewn together. For example, there should be a hole here for the head. Um, so I'm just going to hit X and delete that edge. And likewise, there should be holes for the arms on the side. So I'm just going to delete delete edges here because these edges are representing uh, where these two planes will essentially get sewn together. And so we want to make sure that we have holes for all the limbs. And with my mesh here, there should also be a hole here at the bottom. So I'm going to delete these edges. And that's looking pretty good. So before we can do anything with our cloth simulation, we need to make sure that our uh, character mesh, this person here, is uh, a physics actor, essentially, with collision. And so the way that I have this set up is if you go to the, uh, the, the uh, physics properties tab and click collision, it will add a collision modifier to your modifiers list. And then under the physics properties, you can go through and adjust the settings for the collision. Now I have the thickness outer set to 0 0.001 and the thickness inner set to 0 0.01. Uh, but again, you may need to adjust those depending on uh, you know, the type of cloth that you're after and how closely fitting you want it to, to be to your character. The other thing I did was I significantly turned up the friction. I have it at 50, which is pretty high. Uh, you can put a lower as well if you want, uh, but I just find that having the friction high um, for certain types of clothing just prevents them from sliding down the body as it's doing the simulation. So I'm going to get rid of this reference image because we don't need that anymore. And for this here, I'm going to add the cloth simulation to our planes. So just go into the physics tab, physics properties, and add cloth simulation. And I'm going to change a couple of things here. The first thing is I'm going to click this and set it to default uh, cotton, which it doesn't really matter um, what you select. Each of them will behave differently, but you'll want to experiment with the settings depending on the type of cloth that you're trying to simulate. And you can go through and manually adjust, uh, you know, the, the tension, the shear, the bending, um, all of that kind of stuff in order to get the look that you're, that you're after. Uh, but what is important is down here under shape, you want to turn on sewing. I'm also going to turn uh, self collisions on and turn the collision quality up to like seven or eight. So you may need to experiment with uh, these settings to get you know what you're after, but I'm going to set the max sewing force to 10 and the shrink factor to 0.01. And then when you go ahead and click play, now that we have our physics simulation set up on the character and we have our cloth simulation set up on the cloth, uh, once we hit play, you'll see that this will simulate pretty nicely. One other thing quickly before we do that is just to right click on your planes and hit 
uh, shade smooth because of course cloth is intended to be a smooth object. It'll look a lot better if you if you shade smooth. So let's give this a play. All right, cool. You can see we have uh, we have a a cloth object now that has uh, simulated around our character. It's starting to look like a piece of clothing. Um, but it's not quite there yet, and there are a couple more things that we need to do. So now you know how to do cloth sim, and you can apply this to any type of clothing that you can imagine um, using the same process. If you add more subdivisions, your simulation will take a little bit longer, uh, but you'll get a much nicer result. But at the end of the day, the ultimate goal is to get this into a mesh that you can sculpt, that you can import into uh, you know, Character Creator or Unreal Engine, or uh, that you can move to other programs and that's not what we have here we have simulated cloth that will look okay for a render uh, but is not actually usable as a sculptable mesh so what we need to do is essentially turn this into um, into the shape of the mesh so we're going to essentially bake the simulation into the actual vertex vertex positions of our of our mesh uh, so that this becomes the sort of base state of our mesh. And we're going to do that using shape keys. So with your mesh selected, uh, we're going to go to the cloth simulation. And under this little triangle here, you're going to hit apply as shape key. And you're going to see that your simulation disappears, and that's fine. Then what you want to do is go down to the object data properties here. And under here, you'll see that it has converted that simulation into a shape key so we can now scroll between you know the stages of our of our simulation by turning this value up and down so if we set it to one it is fully simulated and it looks exactly as it just did cool perfect so now how do we get this into being the base state of our mesh well that is actually super easy all you need to do is under here it says this uh, basis shape key uh, we're going to have our cloth set to a value of 1, so it's fully applied, and then we're going to delete the basis, and it's going to make the cloth essentially the base state, and then we can actually delete that cloth shape key as well. Now you'll see that the shading on your object disappears. Uh, I'm not sure why that happens. I think that may be a bug with Blender, uh, but if you select it and you hit tab, and then tab again, so you go in and out of edit mode, uh, that will essentially bring the correct shading back to your object. And now, this is our this is our object. So our mesh has the cloth simulation applied to it. Uh, so there's no more simulation. We have no more we have no more modifiers applied to it. So this is the base state of our mesh. Now there are a couple of more things that we need to do before we can export this. It's not a ton of stuff, but it is one or two relatively important things. So the first thing is uh, you're going to want to obviously UV map this object. So that's something I'm not going to talk about here, but you should learn how to do that. And then the next important thing is we need to clean up the seams where all of our sewing took place. So if you hit tab, you'll see we've applied this to our object, uh, but we still have all of these edges left where there were essentially the strands or the edges that were used to sew, to sew the object together. And so the easy way to clean this up is to just click on you know, both ends of that and to hit M and merge at center and to go through and do that for all of these. So if we do that, if I click these and merge at center and just go down and merge these all the way around the object, uh, this will allow you to essentially get rid of those leftover edges which will have gaps between them. So I'm going to speed this up as I go through and do that for the rest of this mesh. Now when you get to areas like around the arms, because there are holes for the arms, you'll sometimes find that there are areas where you don't necessarily want to merge, but you want to just get rid of the edge. So to do that, just click on both of the vertices at either end of the edge and hit X, delete edge, and it'll get rid of that edge. And so now you can see we have a nice clean hole for the arm there. All right, so now we have this uh, cloth simulation fully baked into our mesh and we've cleaned up all of the seams. Uh, one thing you probably want to do is to go through and clean up the topology so that you have nice edge loops around certain areas. 
For example, you probably want to have nice clean edge loops around like areas where the limbs would be, uh, around the holes at the bottoms and, and bottoms and tops of your, of your pieces, like where the head would be, uh, for example. Um, but that's stuff for, for another video. Another thing that you probably want to do as well if you're working with, as I have been, a very low poly mesh, like you can see that this is pretty, pretty low poly, um, is you can add more, uh, you can add more polys to this by adding a subsurf modifier and that will give you the ability to do more detailed sculpting because, uh, you know, now that this is fully, fully baked into the shape of our mesh, you can go through and do some manual sculpting and change, for example, you know, you can add folds here or there or, you know, change the position of the mesh or, or whatever. So if you wanted to, for example, now you could go through and you could make changes to, you know, the way that the, the way that the mesh looks, or you could clean up any areas where you have overlap with your, with your character. And that is it. Now, if you wanted to export this to Character Creator 3, for example, or uh, to use it in a game engine like Unreal, what you can do is just delete the armature and then, uh, you know, export this on its own. Or if you have a character that's already way painted, uh, you can transfer way painting to this mesh inside Blender using the transfer way paints tool. And that's it. That's how you get your cloth simulation to become essentially applied to your object so that you can export and use it in game engines, in character creator, in whatever else, whatever else you might want to. So that's it for this video. Until next time.